Hi everyone, a very good morning. Today is 13th of December and I welcome you all to Hindu newspaper analysis discussion. In this particular video, we'll discuss entire analysis of Hindu. We'll take all articles along with the background as well as detailed way forward. And also I would like to tell you that if you want, you can download explainer or synoptic notes of this session from Telegram channel. Link for Telegram is given in description box in YouTube. Now, first of all, let's take overview of newspaper so that you can understand that which articles are actually important and relevant in today's newspaper. So here we have a daily edition of Hindu newspaper and on first page, we have this article, Bhajan Lal Sharma will be new CM of Rajasthan. Now recently assembly elections have got concluded and uh, the states such as Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, now they are announcing their chief ministers. However, you are not really required to go and track these particular developments for your examination as such. For interest, you can read but not for examination. Now here we have an important article, Lok Sabha passes bills for women's quota in Jammu and Kashmir, Puducherry. We will take this particular article. Okay. <laughs> then further moving on, uh, then we have these advertisements and in city section, okay, the uh, issues with respect to the road accident, fatalities, fine. And uh, Political articles etc. have been there, not important. Here, one article is there. The hard store, a step to bring inmates' lives back on track. We'll take this particular article and we'll see that how it can be used. Then again, we have uh, these advertisements and all such kind of things. Okay, moving on guys, uh, moving on, uh, we'll reach to editorial section. And in editorial, first article that we have is uh, welcome direction. Now, this particular article is talking about Jammu and Kashmir. With respect to JNDK, Supreme Court has given its judgment uh, two days back. And in this particular judgment, they have said that Jammu and Kashmir's statehood should be restored and elections should be conducted. Also, Article 370's dilution and scrapping has been upheld by Supreme Court. Now, guys, one point is that I would like to tell you that yesterday, I have made one dedicated video on Jammu and Kashmir issue where how Article 370 got scrapped, what is Supreme Court judgment, okay, and all related things I have taken up. So I will recommend you that please watch that video. It is around a 25 minutes video which covers all the dimensions related to J&K. If you have seen it, good. No need to go in this article. If you have not seen it, then please watch that article to develop a comprehensive understanding, okay. Now, moving on in this particular direction, okay, today's editorials, guys, actually, I would like to tell that, uh, first of all, I would tell you about the context of editorial and then we'll see whether they are important for examination or not. Now, first edi editorial, an anti-terror law and its interference with liberty. So, basically, guys, this article is talking about, this article is talking about recent Jammu and Kashmir High Court, which has ordered, uh, cleared the bail for journalist Fahad Shah. So, journalist Fahad Shah, which allegations were made under UAPA and analysis of different uh, analysis of this particular case has been done. Now, I have read this particular entire article and article is actually not containing academic substance which can be utilized in examination. So, it is talking about that, okay, what were the what were the provisions that was used, how the liberty of Mr. Fahad Shah was crippled and all such kind of a things. Okay, then guys, if we go below article, patent exclusion Madras High Court shows the way. Now guys, basically this particular judgment also. Now what it is talking about, it is talking about the section 3 and filters of the section 3 in the Indian Patents Act. Okay, now basically what has happened, Madras High Court has given the ruling on, uh, ruling on the provisions of section 3 and section 3E. For example, Novo enzymes, no, Novozymes versus assistant, assistant controller. So they have talked about that, have given that if mere aggregation of the components have been done, okay, in a drug, whether the protection will be there or not. So on this pro particular provision of section 3A, ruling has been given. Now, guys, understand this particular thing that when we talk about our UPSC examination, syllabus and types of questions that are being asked. So basically, question broadly covers fine. Uh, it, it covers the broad issues, broad themes. Okay. Even in the patent regime, they are not going to go in provision by provision details and how a particular provision or sub clause have been interpreted in the different different judgments. That particular microscopic and nitty gritty related details are not really needed. Okay. Now, how we can say this thing? 
because if you will see the previous year questions that have been there fine you'll get an idea okay so this is the issue here then side article we have this article talking about the gene therapy which has been approved for sickle cell disease now this is an important article for science and tech we'll take this article then moving on in next page the way forward for the india alliance so india alliance is alliance in opposition that has been created for 2024 elections which consists is, consists the major political parties apart from the ruling party and it is talking about that how they should tackle on bjp okay what should be their approach and all such things are there then moving on uh, uh, moving on in this particular direction text and context page india's extreme rainfall corridor okay so basically guys what has happened recently one of a study has been talked about which is talking about that uh, basic uh, which, which is talking about the frequency of monsoons in a particular stretch etc then further uh, what are the implications of recent argentina election okay Millay's policy proposal now understanding the debates around anarcho capitalism now this happens to be an important keyword we'll take it for our examination even for essay we can see this then further we'll move and uh, here we have article an important article Rajya Sabha passes bill for appointment of CEC EC we'll take this particular article for examination okay then moving on uh, Shah introduces redrafted criminal bills in the Lok Sabha so what happened earlier there were three bills that were placed in the parliament which aimed to replace indian evidence act indian penal code and criminal procedure act okay now redrafted version of the bill have been presented in lok sabha now as understand this particular thing that these happens to be an important bill but keep one thing in your mind that first of all you need to track bill once they have been approved at least by one house or once bill have been cleared by house and they are now being converted in act or have been converted in act those particular bills and acts are important okay every bill that is placed in parliament is not important at that point of a time why because as bills will be debated it will be referred to a committee amendments will come changes will come so unnecessarily whatever you are preparing it might get changed so i will suggest on when we talk about the bills there are hundreds and hundreds of bills that are already placed in the parliament at any given point you cannot track all of them so once a bill has been cleared by at least one house or it has become an act then you should recommend because now these provisions will not change okay once it has become an act okay then further moving on in this particular direction biden unlikely to visit for republic day okay uh, low profile bhajal not important article for examination okay uh, moving on here we have an article 74% indians cannot afford healthy diet in 2021 we'll take this particular article then this article is also important uh, modi kicks off global ai summit so global ai summit has been started in delhi we'll take this particular article then after that on world page strikes across gaza israel keeps its attack so one article comes on this particular issue every day however you are not really required to track it for the sake of examination then moving on then moving on uh, we have these evolutionary trends etc here then in business page uh, base effect boosted iip okay economy is moving in the right direction statement has given by the finance minister then we have these corporate trends etc and after that sign uh, sports page is there then guys in last we have science page in which sometimes there are some good articles that come now what this article is talking about in the chaos of turbulence scientists chase glimpses of hidden order okay now guys the article is talking about turbulence okay the flow of wind which now see if you see now they say this particular thing that if you see the wind gushes that are there or let's say if you have ever lighted up an incense stick that is agarbatti so the smoke will flow in a particular pattern but after after the smoke has traveled little bit of a distance it will be disturbed and it will lose all its symmetry it is because of the turbulence of air that is there in the atmosphere so they say that these patterns of turbulence looks chaotic but there can be something all that particular very in abstract way it has been discussed okay so article does not contains uh, so that is something that has been provided here then here on the side we have an article will in will an ai canvasser deceive voters so now this article will take so this is guys all about the articles in this this is all about the articles in 
the newspaper and now let's discuss all these relevant articles one by one in detail and as i've told you that if you want you can download explainer notes of this particular session okay let's discuss one by one okay so every class before we start we take a gs quotation and the idea is to give you some content which you can use to complement your answers in examination and today we'll take quotation from nahala walji senior gender advisor to united nation and she has talked about the unpaid labor work of women so she says that our formal economy is only possible because it is subsidized by women's unpaid work now if we see if we see women's unpaid work women's care work it is not accounted in formal economic estimates such as the gdp but if women are not doing this unpaid work formal work will not be possible formal work by male is possible because somebody is there at the home to take care of their children to take care of the home to take care of the elders okay and that domestic work is often unpaid and bigger tragedy is that it is even unrecognized so that unpaid and unrecognized work supports economy okay you can use this particular idea in gs paper number 1 social issues as well as social justice and specifically issues related to women which are mentioned in both gs1 as well as gs paper number 2 we'll take this particular article so that is all about it and uh, now let's take first article understanding debates around anarcho capitalism understanding the debates around anarcho capitalism okay so this particular article you can see uh, basically see this is a kind of a political philosophy so within political philosophies or as an idea in essay paper we can use it okay so essay paper gs paper number 3 political philosophies the article can be seen now first of all guys let's see that why this particular word keyword anarcho capitalism has become important and what it means so recently what has happened recently what has happened so recently what has happened javier milei who has won the presidential race in argentina has declared that he is anarcho capitalism supporter he is an anarcho capitalism supporter now what is anarcho capitalism so it comes from two words that is anarchy and capitalism anarchy and capitalism so basically anarchy is a now see often we see or we equate anarchy with chaos disorderliness but no that is not all about anarchy anarchy is a political system or it is a political theory which provides that state is unnecessary evil state is unnecessary evil now little bit idea let me give you see this particular thing see when we talk about democracy when we talk about to talk about democracy democracy is based on to the idea that the state is necessary evil state is necessary evil okay anarchy is based on to the idea that the state is unnecessary evil now see when we talk about democracy democracy says democracy recognizes this particular thing that the state sometimes becomes evil why it becomes evil understand the context because a democracy imposes restrictions on one's freedom it imposes restrictions on one's liberties on one choices therefore sometimes a state become may might sound evil but that evil is a necessary because if your freedoms will not be restricted little bit then nobody can enjoy their liberties and freedom in spirit it is just like a vaccine when i go to take a vaccine doctor will put a needle in my body that will pain okay that will pain and as it is paining i see it as a bad evil but in long term it gives me the protection so therefore it is necessary also 
in the same way democracy sees a state as a necessary evil it might hamper your liberties but it is necessary when we talk about when we talk about anarchy anarchy sees a state as evil and unnecessary evil and unnecessary so therefore anarchy provides for the stateless society anarchy provides for the stateless society as per anarchy as per anarchy freedom freedom is the most important thing freedom is the most important freedom fulfills human and any state will restrict your freedom will restrict your freedom so therefore state is unnecessary so therefore anarchy propagates a stateless society anarchy propagates a stateless society is it clear or not now now when we talk about capitalism when we talk about the capitalism capitalism is a political setup now see capitalism we see as an economic theory as well as political theory both okay so this confusion should not be there when we talk about the capitalism capitalism promotes free market capitalism promotes free hand to the capitalist state and minimal interference of the state okay now capitalist when we talk about the capitalism capitalism promotes that private property should be there all the decisions of market should purely be controlled by the business groups government should not interfere in that okay now what is anarcho capitalism so anarcho capitalism is a political philosophy which provides that there should be the abolition of a state and even the matters of police matters of governance matters of judiciary should be given to the capitalist class now when we talk about guys free market preachers free market proponents fine anarcho capitalists are different from them anarcho capitalists are different from them and anarcho capitalists are different from the capitalist also because guys when we talk about free market advocates capitalist advocates they provide this thing that in economic in economic sphere capitalist should be given free hand but they support that the government or the state is needed government or state is needed to provide policing to provide judicial services for the governance so capitalist uh, traditionally have provided that state should be restricted to matters of governance and law and order other economic spheres private business interest groups should be given the importance but anarcho capitalist they provide that capitalist should be given the sphere of governance policing judiciary as well as business everything now when we talk about anarcho capitalism the coin the term anarcho capitalism was coined by american economist murray rothbard and full fledged supporter of anarcho capitalism was belgian political economist gustavo di molinari and mr uh, and javier milei who has won the presidential race in argentina calls himself that he is the supporter of anarcho capitalism is a supporter of anarcho capitalism so therefore this anarcho capitalism anarcho capitalism has become quite uh, quite uh, in the news has come in the news okay now now guys when we talk about the anarcho capitalist anarcho capitalist okay now see this particular thing that they provide this particular thing that currently policing and court systems policing court systems judicial services they are just being offered by the government they are being offered by the state so in a way state has a monopoly you cannot start your private police i cannot start my private court only state can provide you judicial service or police services so they have a monopoly citizens don't have any option so therefore what actually is happening often state does not become state develops a lack of accountability towards the public often we find that judicial systems are inefficient particularly when we talk about india 3.5 crore cases are pending in the judiciary 3.5 crore cases are pending in the judiciary okay and the cases they are getting dragged on for years and years similarly when we talk about policing we don't find that the policing is carried on scientific efficient lines and sometimes the response and treatment given by police to the common citizens is also not satisfactory why it is because that the police and judiciary is not facing competition now guys see this particular thing see this particular thing suppose you are using the mobile of you are, you are using the uh, mobile network of jio okay and you find that you are not getting good services you can port your mobile number to some other company let's say airtel you put a porting request 
what will happen geo representatives will call you immediately and will ask you that sir ma'am what happened why you are switching to other network you will tell that i am facing this problem they'll say that okay we'll resolve this particular problem why because there is a competition that is there so they are accountable to you private enterprises always as they face competition they care for their consumers so anarcho capitalist provides that when we talk about the policing court system judicial service judicial facilities they are being offered just by the state and they are using the taxpayers money and they developed a lack of accountability so if private sector will come private sector will have their own policing they will have their own judicial services they will charge a fees and when they are giving the services to the people what will happen they will be accountable because if i am not giving the good policing service you will change your service provider you will change your service provider now basically this is something they have said but actually critic says that it is an impractical ideology it is an impractical philosophy now why impractical philosophy your doubts will now be getting cleared i know that this doubt might have come in you now see they say this particular thing that how multiple police multiple police services multiple judiciary services cannot be provided by multiple farms in a single geographical region now suppose there is a judicial service by x organization and judicial service in y organization judicial service of x company has given a ruling i don't believe it okay i will not follow it is it clear or not i say that i don't follow it because there are the multiple judicial systems multiple courts run by the different corporates multiple policing run by the different corporate houses people will not adhere people will not oblige okay also what will happen also what will happen this will create conflicts between the armed private gangs now these private polices they will become armed private gangs and there will be the conflict between them also what will happen now as police protection will be available on the payment basis rich people will get high protection poor people will get less protection because they are it is not possible for them to pay for the protection services now today as there is a common policing it is available for poor and rich both okay fine they are not paying the money so poor people don't have to make any upfront payment they are still getting the protection because it is being sponsored by the government okay so in that particular case there will be the problem and therefore it becomes an impractical ideology but anarcho capitalist again justify this they say this particular thing that see if private police will engage in such kind of a behavior will engage in such kind of a behavior that they are outrightly engaging in conflict with the other police organization it will create a chaos and in the long run it will impact the it will impact the business model so they themselves will not engage in such kind of conflicts also it is being provided that poor will still get the protection poor will still get the protection because see large revenues are not coming from the rich but from the larger society see any organization now you see always in the history this has been true that rich people's population is few is very less and poor people's population is more poor people's population or people from lower middle classes their population has been high always it has happened so they say that actually rich though they have a lot of money but they are not the big consumer for any organization's service any organization's service okay do you think that apple's majority of profit are coming from rich suppose suppose there is a mr x who is a rich person he will buy one iphone maybe he will change iphone every year but such rich people might be hundreds poor people or middle class people who will take a loan and will still buy the phone they will be the lakhs and lakhs so larger society is the majority society is one who gives major revenue to the private organization okay rich people might be rich but they are not giving the major revenue to private organization so therefore these organizations will always be concerned about the poor people's interest poor people's interest so this is about it okay so i hope guys that you have understood this entire idea and now moving to the next article lok sabha passes lok sabha passes bill for women's quota in jammu and kashmir puducherry okay in jammu and kashmir puducherry now we'll see this particular article with respect to gs paper number 2 as well as gs paper number 1 women and related issues women and related issues okay so basically basically i want to give you a little bit of a background once we take this background we'll go in this particular article and i have provided this 
background in here notes also you can download it so basically guys what has happened what has happened recently 128th constitutional amendment bill was proposed which will emerge as 106th constitutional amendment act now this 108th constitutional amendment bill or 106th constitutional amendment act has proposed reserving one third seats for the women in parliament as well as the state legislative assembly this is important why this is important because as per the latest global gender gap report as per the latest global gender gap report report 2023 it is provided that in the lok sabha which was constituted in 2019 15.1% MPs are women. 15.1% MPs are women. Which is the best since independence. When we talk about state legislative assembly, state legislative assembly, we have just 10% of the MLAs who are women. However, at the same time, if we talk about the Panchayati Raj institutions or the local bodies, and let's specifically talk about the Panchayats, 45% of the panchayat members, 45% of the panchayat members are women. Okay, now you see that a huge difference is there in terms of number. And largely it has to do because of one third reservation for women that has already been implemented in the local bodies, urban local bodies and panchayats by the virtue of the 73rd and 4th Constitutional Amendment Act. Though that is also true that Sarpanch Pati, Pradhan Pati, Pradhan Sasur, Pradhan, De Pradhan Devar concept prevails, which is what happens actually in the name of women, their husbands, their brother-in-law, their father-in-law are ruling that prevails that even Supreme Court has taken the noting of that thing. But at least in theory, their numbers of women are getting encouraged. And if they are getting formal positions over a period of time, they will exercise that position also. Okay. Now, what actually happens? So, therefore, we have provided one third reservation to women in the Lok Sabha's Legislative Assembly also by this 128th Constitutional Amendment Bill. It got passed recently. Now, guys, what actually has happened? One more thing that this will not be implemented in 2024 election. Why? Because government already has provided that this reservation will be given after two conditions are met. Number one, delimitation of 2026 and census of 2021 which has not been held till now it will be held and only these two things are done they will be given so we can expect that best women will get their reservation in 2029 but the bill has already been passed okay this is something that is there now guys what has happened now basically now what has happened Lok Sabha has passed the two bills have passed the two bills and these particular bills provide 33 percent reservation to women in Puducherry and Jammu and Kashmir also. In Puducherry and Jammu and Kashmir also. Are you getting it or not? Both are the uh, Puducherry and Jammu and Kashmir Union territories also. Okay. So this is the uh, development that has come by this particular article. I hope guys that you have discussed. Uh, I, I hope that you have got it. Now we'll move to the next article. Rajya Sabha passes bill for appointment of CEC, EC. Chief Election Commissioner and Election Commissioner will take this particular article with respect to GS paper number 2, issues related to polity. Issues related to polity. Okay. So, uh, basically guys, when we talk about Chief Election Commissioner and Election Commissioner, they happen to be one of the most important functionaries for the working of a democracy. When we talk about a democracy, democracy thrives on free, fair and transparent election systems. And for free, fair and transparent elections, autonomy and independence of election commission and chief election commissioner, election commissioners is very important. Now, for their independence, their election process needs to be uh, needs to be based on fair principles or the principles of transparency now guys when we talk about present system that was there for the appointment of chief election commissioner and election commissioner it was straightforward actually chief election commissioner election commissioners they were appointed by they were appointed by prime minister and council of minister under the seal of the president 
Now, actually, appointment was done by president. But we know this particular thing that the president acts on the aid and advice of council of minister and prime minister. So, actually, appointment of chief election commissioner and election commissioner effectively was being done by prime minister and council of ministers. Now, Supreme Court expressed this particular thing as a concern and Supreme Court provided this thing. Let's see, let's see, there might be a possibility that the person who is a CEC or EC is the person of integrity, but political biasness, political inclination might be there in that particular person's mind also. There is a possibility that the government is deliberately appointing such a person as CEC and EC who is inclined towards their political party. So, this thing is there and it might impact the free and fair elections in India in the long run. So, therefore, Supreme Court in March this year, Supreme Court bench provided that the appointment process of election commissioners and chief election commissioners need to be changed. And they provided that a law should be passed by the government. And till the time the law is not passed, they suggested that appointment of chief election commissioner and election commissioner will be done by a committee. And in that committee, who members will be there? So, that committee will have prime minister, leader of opposition, chief justice of India, okay? This committee will choose it. This committee will choose it. Now, if you remember, I told you that this committee will do the work. This committee will do the work. Just a minute. This committee will do the work till the parliament enacts a law. Till the parliament enacts a law. Okay. Now, parliament has finally come with the bill. Now, parliament has come with the bill. And what actually has happened? What actually has happened? Rajya Sabha. Rajya Sabha has cleared. Now, what is the name of this particular bill? Chief Election Commissioner and other election commissioners. Appointment. Conditions of service. And a term of office bill. Okay. Term of office bill. So, this particular bill has been cleared by Rajya Sabha. Now, what are the provisions of this particular bill? Now, this particular bill provides this thing that there will be the two stage. There will be the two stage process for appointment of chief election commissioner and election commissioner. First, there will be the search committee. First, there will be the search committee. This search committee will shortlist names of the people who can be appointed as CEC and EC. And then, and then there will be selection committee. There will be selection committee who will finalize the names from the pool of the suggestions that have been given by this search committee. So now, as we talk about the search committee, okay, as we talk about the search committee, search committee or search panel will be led by, will be led by law minister and two other secretaries who will be the member. And they will shortlist five names. They will shortlist five names. And out of these five names, Chief Election Commissioner and Election Commissioner is to be, is to be appointed. Okay. And in this search committee, who will be there? Just a minute. In this search committee, who will be there? So in the search, uh, sorry, selection committee, who will be there? In selection committee, Prime Minister will be there. Leader of opposition will be there. And a union cabinet minister will be there. Now, if you see, this particular selection committee is different from what Supreme Court recommended. Now, Supreme Court recommended that along with the PM and LOP, Chief Justice of India should be there in that particular committee. Now, what has happened in the place of Chief Justice of India, place of Chief Justice of India, they have brought a union cabinet minister. Now, this particular things become little bit concerning and opposition parties had said that it has defeated the spirit of judgment. Now, if you see, if you see, Prime Minister is from the ruling party and Union Cabinet Minister also happens to be the ruling party and only leader of opposition is the one who will act as a counterweight. So, at the end of the day, again, again, what will happen? See, Law Minister will be from ruling party. Two secretaries, most probably, they will also be, also be the ones who are favorable to the Law Minister and here also, Prime Minister and Union Cabinet Minister are from the ruling party. So, at the end of the day, they see that nothing on ground has happened. Chief Justice of India should have been kept there so that a neutrality is maintained in this particular selection committee. But with the bringing of Union Cabinet Minister, purpose has been defeated. This is a criticism that comes. Okay. So, this is provision of this particular bill. Okay. Now, guys, moving in this particular direction, also few more provisions have been brought in this particular bill. For example, one specific clause have been provided that legal proceedings cannot be initiated against chief election commissioner, election commissioner, 
for the actions that they have taken during the discharge of their duty. Okay, so a kind of an immunity from legal proceedings have been provided. And also what has happened, they provided this thing that the chief election commissioners, okay, they, uh, chief election commissioner and election commissioners, they have been brought on par with the Supreme Court judges in terms of salaries, emoluments that will be provided to them. So this is a positive thing. It will, it will give a protection and it will give stability to the CECs and ECs, which is good. But as I told you, the composition of selection committee, it has been a concern. So that is all guys about it. Now the opposition wanted that the bill should be sent to select committee, but this is not happening. Okay. So that is about this particular article. And now moving to next article. Now moving to next article. So here we have this article. And if you are following the newspaper analysis regularly, we have discussed this particular article, I think two days or three days back also. Now again, it has been reported here in editorial. So game changer, this particular article will see with respect to GIS paper number three, health, health and science and technology and the developments in science and technology for better health or for, for uh, better health or for treating the diseases okay now let's take this particular article so basically guys recently what has happened recently what has happened first of all couple of months back uk's drug regulator has approved cas givi which is a gene therapy for the treatment of sickle cell diseases as well as thalassemia now what has happened now what has happened us fda us fda also has cleared the gene therapy for the sickle cell disease. US FDA has cleared CAS Givi. This is the same that was cleared by UK also. And they have also approved Life Genia. And CAS Givi and Life Genia, they have been approved for treating sickle cell disease in the patients over 12 years. So as of now, US FDA has given only for sickle cell disease. Okay, thalassemia, they have not given approval, which UK has given approval. First of all, what is the sickle cell disease? What is the sickle cell disease? Now guys, now guys, when we talk about, now see, when we, uh, you, th these are our, let's say, blood streams. These are, these are our blood streams. Now we know that red blood cells, red blood cells, they are responsible for carrying the hemoglobin. Okay, uh, sorry. Red blood cells or hemoglobin, they are responsible for carrying the oxygen to the different, different parts of the body. And when we talk about the structure of the RBCs, they have this circular structure. They have this circular structure. And because of their structure, because of the circular structure of the red blood cells, easily they can circulate in our blood, in, in our blood, when veins, blood streams. But sometimes what happens, sometimes what happens, these particular RBCs, they become sickle shaped, they become sickle shaped. And because of the sickle shaped, what happens, they get clogged in our blood vessels, in blood, in our blood streams, they get clogged. And because of that particular thing, what happens, oxygenated blood or oxygenated RBCs, oxygenated RBCs, okay, hemoglobin, it is not able to reach the body parts. And because of that particular thing, what happens? It leads to fatality. It leads to a lot of pain and all such things. Okay. Now, when we talk about sickle cell disease, in most of the cases, sickle cell disease is a hereditary disease. Means it is passed from parents to their children. So, therefore, these sickle cell disease, faulty hemoglobin, faulty hemoglobin, faulty red blood cells, they are needed to be corrected for its treatment. Now, traditionally treatment for sickle cell disease is the replacement of bone marrow. It is the replacement of bone marrow. But in bone marrow replacement, there is one problem. Number one, it is expensive and even bigger problem than that is that a worthy donor, compatible donor is also to be found out. Okay. And most of the times if a compatible donor is not found out, a person will not be getting treated. So therefore, what has happened? Gene therapies have been cleared. Now, first of all, guys, let's understand both of these gene therapies. Now, first is, first is CAS Givi. First is this CAS Givi. Now, what this CAS Givi does, CAS Givi uses gene editing tool that is CRISPR-Cas9. Now, CRISPR-Cas9, they are also called as molecular scissors. 
okay and even crispr technology has won the nobel prize way back in 2020 now what this crispr cas9 does okay so if you see here i will show you in this particular picture and i have given it in the synoptic notes please download it also so basically guys bcl uh, bcl double one a gene is there and this bcl double one a gene what it does it restricts the production of fetal hemoglobin it represent uh, it represses the production of fetal hemoglobin and when we talk about the fetal hemoglobin okay as fetal hemoglobin is blocked healthy hemoglobin is restricted healthy hemoglobin's production is restricted so what we can do if we can block this bcl double one a gene if we can remove this bcl double one a gene or can repair this then fetal hemoglobin's production will not be restricted fetal hemoglobin's production will not be restricted and fetal hemoglobin's production will increase which will automatically help in production of healthy hemoglobin so therefore so therefore what is done by what is done by this cas give therapy so this cas give therapy use this gene editing tool crispr cas9 so let's say this is the structure of our let's say your dna okay so basically it edits your DNA, it edits your DNA and disables BCL11A, okay? This BCL11A was responsible for turning of the fetal hemoglobin and as this BCL11A will be disabled, fetal hemoglobin, fetal hemoglobin which will be produced, okay? And it does not have, it, it will, as it does not have the abnormalities of the faulted hemoglobin, sickle cell disease will be cured or, uh, or the, uh, Sickle cells is uh, sickle cell diseases. Uh, uh, I'm not getting the word or uh, the sickle cell disease. Uh, its uh, prevalence can be reduced. Okay, so this is Cas Kiwi. Then the next is next is Life Genia. Life Genia. Now Life Genia it works on some different kind of a methodology. What it does? It uses disabled lentivirus. Now, guys, when we talk about the lentivirus, lentivirus belongs to the genus of rotovirus. And this particular virus has been responsible for deadly diseases in mammals. But what they are doing, they are using, they are using the disabled version of lentivirus. And this lentivirus is used to introduce a new gene for hemoglobin new healthy gene for hemoglobin in bloodstream and this healthy gene of hemoglobin it will promote the production of the healthy hemoglobin in the blood and that healthy hemoglobin production will help in will help in the treatment so this is the life genia and the life genia and the cas give you now in prelims examination also question on this particular line can be asked that recently cas give you life genia was in news they are related to what they are related to treatment of sickle cell diseases they are uh, related to uh, they are related to 3d printing or something like that fine so you need to know that they are related to the treatment of sickle cell disease they are the gene therapies now what are the concerns in these particular treatment methodologies so there are certain concerns number one concern is that they are going to be very expensive exorbitantly expensive so therefore accessibility to poor people for example guys when we talk about india sickle cell disease impacts the tribal people and often these tribal people they are coming from economically poor sections of society so therefore such people might not be able to afford it secondly as we talk about bone marrow transplant which was the traditional treatment bone marrow transplant even till today it is an old method but even till today bone marrow transplant can be done only by some selected hospitals selected hospitals in the same way in the same way, this gene therapies, they will also be available in some selected hospital, selected hospitals. So therefore, the number of beneficiaries who can take its benefit, they are less, very much less. And when they are being offered in selected hospitals, often also cost will be high. Then, then when we talk about right now, clinical trials have happened and clinical trials have shown the higher efficacy of these particular treatment regimens. But still, we need to test out in the general population. And we need to still see that whether efficacy which was there in clinical trials it it gets it uh, it stands in the same way or not. Okay. Also, 
Also, guys, possibility of unintended genetic modifications. Now, see, you have, let's say this DNA. You have this particular DNA. Now, your DNA is your blueprint. Your DNA is your blueprint. Type of hairs that you will have, type of skin that you will have, type of uh, every, uh, every cell, every tissue, every organ in your body, it is being sustained by that DNA. Okay, you are getting shape, you are getting outlook, your blueprint is DNA. Now, what is happening? That underlying code, DNA is getting modified by CRISPR-Cas9. So, there might be some in unintended consequences that a person will say. So, side effects might be there and we need to ascertain them. So, this is our, these are all the concerns with respect to this issue. Now, moving on to next article. 74% Indians could not afford healthy diet in 21 report. Okay, we'll take this particular article with respect to GS paper number two, fine, as well as GS paper number one, issues related to hunger, issues related to hunger, social justice also, you can use it. Now, see this particular thing, guys, that when we talk about reports, etc., uh, and by the way, reports can also be asked in your prelims examination, because in past few years, we have seen that number of questions that are being asked on reports, they have increased. Now, but, uh, and secondly, in the mains examination, dedicated questions on reports might not come. Okay, what might happen? They will ask a question, let's say, on hunger. And let's say you are writing the prevalence of hunger and you can support your point by giving some data from a report. So, reports can be used to give data. Reports can be used to authenticate, to give credibility to your answer. So, let's take this particular report. First of all, what is the name of a report and who has released this report? We'll see that and then we'll see findings of the report. So basically, name of a report, name of the report is Regional Overview of Food Security and Nutrition 2023 Statistics and Trends Report. Regional Overview of Food Security and Nutrition 2023 Statistics and Trend Report. This particular report has been released by Food and Agriculture Organization under the United Nations. Now, this particular report has talked about the hunger prevalence. And as per this particular report, as per this particular report, more than 74% of Indians could not afford a healthy diet in 2021. And in 2020, it was 76.2 percentage points. Now, when we talk about the sustainable developmental goals, okay, zero hunger happens to be one of a sustainable development goal. So, by seeing these particular data, we can know that how well a nation is doing on the hunger front and whether we will be able to reach the SDGs or not. SDG goal number two specifically, zero hunger. Now, Question comes, now they say healthy diet. Guys, you need to understand this thing. That's see, We are running National Food Security Act 2013 and under this, we provide subsidized food grain and now free food grains we are providing because recently, Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyanan Yojana has promised that under National Food Security Act, free food grains will be provided for five years. Earlier, they were subsidized. I'll tell you. 3 rupees kg rice, 2 rupee kg wheat and 1 rupee kg coarse grains were being provided earlier but now free of cost will be provided. And under National Food Security Act, under National Food Security Act, 75% people of urban India are, uh, sorry, 75% people of rural India are covered, 50% people of urban India are covered and pan India, 66% people are covered. So, 66% people today in India, they are entitled to get free food grains. But still why? these high number because because when we talk about the NFSA and it is a critique of NFSA please listen it very carefully largely what it is providing it is providing rice wheat coarse grains let's say these are the sources of carbohydrates these are the sources of carbohydrates but what is a healthy diet healthy diet is diet is one which contains balanced composition of a three micro macronutrients these three macronutrients are protein fat and carbohydrate and 23 micronutrients should be there in a diet and that diet is called as a healthy diet. But problem is that under NFSA, you are providing rice, you are providing wheat, which are good sources of the carbohydrate. But what about protein? What about fat? So the diet rich in fats and proteins particularly, they are expensive. And majority of Indians are not able to afford it. Okay. Okay. They are not able to afford it. And even if I will take the examples, find a lot of students who are particularly living outside fine, who are cooking their own food or eating the food out of the tiffins. What is happening? A, a healthy adult, for example, a healthy adult needs one 
0 0.8 to 1 gram of protein per kg of body weight. So let's say if you are 60 kg, you need, you need 60 gram of protein, 1 gram of protein per kg body weight. So it is 0 0.8 to 1 gram. But often we are not getting it. So large number of Indians are not getting a healthy diet and who cannot afford a healthy diet, their number is 74%. In Pakistan, the people who cannot afford a healthy diet, their number is 82.2%. Bangladesh, their number is 66.1%. And the report further provides this thing that what is happening? There will be a compounding effect that will aggravate the health problem. What is compounding effect? See, number one, they say that number one, they say that as climate change is coming, food production is declining. Food production is declining and poverty is increasing. Food production declining, poverty increasing, it will further expose more people with hunger and many more people also then cannot be able to afford the healthy diet. And they say that, the article says this particular thing, that there is 5F crisis going on. Now, see, I will highly insist that please use these kind of terminologies in your answers. 5F crisis. What is 5F crisis? Crisis of food, feed, fuel, fertilizer and finance. Okay. Asia Pacific accounts for half of the world's severe food insecurity, severe food insecurity and more and women are insecure, more insecure than men. 16% of undernourished people in the world, they live in the Asia Pacific region. Okay. And further, this is important data with respect to India. 31.7%, 31.7% of children in India under the age of 5 are stunted, are having stunted growth. Now, what is a stunting? Stunting is low height with respect to age. Low height with respect to age. And when we talk about the wasting, prevalence of wasting is 18.7%. And what is wasting? Low weight for height. Low weight for height. So, wasted children are the ones who don't have proportionate weight as per their height. So, stunting and wasting is a very big problem in India. And 53% of women between the age of 15 to 49, they have anemia, that is the deficiency of iron, which is because of the non-consumption of leafy vegetables or the food rich in iron. So, anemia's prevalence is in 53% of the women. So, this is all the data that they have given. But on one front, we are improving, we are doing good, that is exclusive breastfeeding. So, it is recommended that at least for first six months, a child should be given exclusive breastfeeding. Okay. And in this particular front, India has performed good and 63.7% of 63.7% of infants in India, they receive the exclusive world uh, breastfeeding. Now, world average is 47.7%, but India, we have 63.7%, which is a good number. Okay. Now, that is all about it. I hope that it is clear. And now we'll take the next article. Modi kicks off global AI summit. Okay. Now, if you see, we have discussed in the past also that artificial intelligence prevalence is a double-edged sword. On one end, artificial intelligence is helping many areas. For example, it has made a drug discovery efficient. Artificial intelligence can replace the repetitive jobs. And though by this, it will replace the jobs, but it will also create the new jobs for data engineers, for AI optimizers. Okay. Big data engineers. Now, how AI should be regulated and how AI should be leveraged for the positive. For this particular thing, Global AI Summit has been now started in India, New Delhi, Bharat Mandapa. Okay. Now, this annual Global AI Partnership, annual Global Partnership for AI Summit, annual Global Partnership for AI Summit has been started in India, okay, which will discuss the safety and challenges related to AI. Fine. Safety and security challenges related to AI. In this particular global AI summit, 29 countries are participating, which includes countries from North America, South America, Europe, as well as Asia. Now, one particular thing, uh, basically in the past, they have also asked the members of organization meet summits. Keep one particular thing. China is not a member. China is not a member. And previous version of this particular summit was held in Japan, Osaka. This particular time, this summit is being held in India. China is not a member. 29 countries are participating. Now, Prime Minister of India has opened up certain questions, 
has opened up certain debates which will be discussed in this particular summit. For example, Prime Minister has opened up this particular debate that can we establish an institutional mechanism that ensures a resilient employment because I told you that AI is going to replace a lot of jobs. For example, job of data entry will be replaced. Let's say guys, let's say mm, you make a video and you want to put subtitles in that particular video. Earlier putting that subtitle was a manual process. But now the subtitles can be added by AI. Even let's say I am speaking in Hindi, it will translate in real time. Uh, basically, if I am speaking in Hindi, it will be translated to English or any language. Okay. So data, data entry jobs will be replaced by AI. A lot of jobs will be replaced by AI. Even in creative field, the jobs will be replaced by AI. So how employment resilience can be created? Then can we bring standardized global AI education curriculum? Okay. Also, Prime Minister suggested that there should be the watermarking of all the AI products. Any picture, any video generated by AI should be watermarked. Because today we see that AI is being used to make the doctored videos, synthetic videos, which are called as a deep fake, which are called as a deep fake. And because of this particular thing, because of this particular thing, what happens? Because of this particular thing, what happens? It becomes a concern. So all these particular issues will be discussed. Now see, discussion and deliberation will happen. Nothing has come out of this as of now. Okay, if something comes, concrete comes out of it in the next two, three days as this particular meeting will go, we'll take that particular updation also. Now, moving on in this particular direction. Will an AI canvasser deceive voters? Will an AI canvasser deceive voters? Okay, so what this issue is guys all about, uh, just as a case study, as an example, you can use it. You can use it as an example or as a case study. Let me tell you first of all. So basically, what has happened in USA? In USA. So one of a Democrat leader who is running for Congress. Okay. What? Just a minute. What she has done? She has, she has, she is using the services of a robo caller. Robo caller. Now, what is a robo caller? Guys, see this particular thing. We talk about chat GPT. We talk about chat GPT. Now, when we talk about chat GPT, chat GPT is a chat box which can carry human like conversations. I will type a prompt and it will give me a reply. Okay, and on the basis, so let's say, let's say I asked that, uh, let's say I asked that, what were the reasons of 1857 revolt? It will give me an answer. Now, I need to carry conversation like a human. For example, every time I will not quote that for 1857 revolt, what was this, what was this? Now, next question, let's say that will I ask that which leaders were involved? Now, automatically it will pick the context that, okay, you are asking about 1857 because earlier conversation was about 1857 revolt and it will give me the answer. So this human-like conversation is going on, but it is into the, it, it, it is into the typed format or it is into the text format. Now, what is a robocaller? Robocaller is, a robocaller is an AI program which can carry voice interactions with the people. Now, what this AI can do? This AI, first of all, can study the profile of the voters or electors in a constituency. And by studying their profile, AI can learn in advance that what are their tastes, what are their preferences. And on that particular basis, then this robocaller can converse, can carry the conversation with them and can influence that particular voter or elector to vote for a particular representative who has deputed this particular robocaller. Now, guys, understand this particular thing. Humans, they get irritated very easily. Humans, they get irritated very easily. Sometimes they create mistakes. They cannot analyze data that well. Now, for example, guys, for example, every day you might be receiving the call for credit card, for loans, or many such different kind of things. Now, the person who is calling you, let's say, is a human most of the time and does not know anything with you. And often they lose your interest and you disconnect the phone. But these AI robocallers, First, they will study your profile. Let's say from social media, they will study your profile. 
and by the see the type of posts that you are writing the type of videos that you are liking that your watch history your engagements by that they can make your psychological profile that what type of a person you are what will incite your interest now guys for example for example i might like that this government xyz now see government has their manifesto okay now in manifesto they will be talking about different different things let's say i am not interested in uh, let's say i am not interested in let's say i am not interested in education or health let's say i am interested in the construction of a particular let's say i am i'm interested in the construction of ram mandir they can talk me they can talk with me on this specific issue okay now i will be more interested so ai based robo callers ai based robo callers they can study psychological make make psychological profiles and can carry more interactive conversation and can influence the voters and this ai robo caller is being used by the name of ashley in us elections in us elections now this particular thing can have a long lasting impacts on elections can have long lasting impacts on elections okay so this is something that is there and even this ashley is fluent in 20 languages so language barrier is not there fluent in 20 languages secondly it can make thousands of call in one day it is simply a computer program one time a computer program can make calls to 20 20 different people okay fine it is a computer program it can make call to the different different people and can talk with them simultaneously and even does not get irritated if somebody is not giving a favorable response can work 24 7 okay so this is the future of elections this is the future of elections okay so it might have a problem with respect to the free fair usage free fair usage and guys here we also find an example of corporate ethics which they are preaching right now we don't know whether they will follow it in the future or not so one of the founder one of the founder one of the founder of the organization civox which is making this particular ai they have provided they have provided that deliberately what they will do uh, okay so they have provided this particular thing that mos kantsky mos kantsky who is one of a founder and their co-founders what safeguards and checks they have introduced number one number one they are setting a committee which is empowered to force them to publicly disclose anything of the concern about the company okay publicly they have deliberately created a committee which will force them to disclose anything of concern number one number two ashley this robo caller is deliberately given the robotic sound robotic sound because guys you might have seen on the internet that what actually has happened in the past in the past people they have actually fell in love with the chatbots okay and even many of them have declared their marital status committed to a chatbot. So deliberately they have given a robotic sound so that the people don't get deceived. Okay. Also they will, this Ashley will disclose that it is an AI. Though legally it is not mandated or obliged to do that as of now. So this is something safeguards that they are using. Okay. So this is all about it. Now moving to next article. Uh, the hard store, a step to bring inmates lives back on track. So guys, this is an example that can be used that how uh, the organizations, how the jail authorities at Tihar are taking steps to mainstream the jail inmates. Now, what has happened? So Tihar jail in Delhi, Tihar jail in Delhi, they have opened Tihar jail store, Tihar store. Now, this particular store will sell many items such as clothes, artificial jewelry, bread, buns, candles. And this particular store will be run by jail inmates. And most of the items that are being prepared in this particular, uh, that are being sold in this store will be made by jail inmates. Now, this will give a livelihood to the people in jail. Also, it will give an opportunity to these people to get mainstreamed because if they get this particular experience of running a store, manufacturing these items, tomorrow when they will be released, they can carry this particular business in their life. Okay. Also, guys, by this particular thing, what will happen? Now, see, we always see jail people, the people who are in jail, that they will always be angry or they are dreaded or we fear them. There is, but we forget that they are also humans. They are also humans, though they have made some they might have made some grave mistakes but they are also human we forget this particular thing why because the connect between people and the jail inmates is not there so such thing can also be established such thing can also be established 
okay so this is about it fine so it is a human touch that has been taken up and such examples should be should be used in your answers okay this is about it and let's take the mains practice question for today so question that we have is women have largely been underrepresented in political arena in india do you think women reservation in parliament could solve the problem of could solve the problem of underrepresentation of women in politics okay gs paper number 2 so that is all guys about this particular uh, this particular discussion i hope guys that you have understood it i hope that you have understood it and with this we come to an end however i'll take the questions if you have any question sir isn't that a breach of privacy as they are using personal data to study a person and yeah, uh, use ai which is very dangerous so this is the reason that they are telling okay anyhow anyhow what they are doing see they are taking the data from already profiles that are open okay now problem that is coming is that we talk all the time about privacy but we are the ones who are all the time posting photographs photographs of our children our parents on the internet so point is that you are already leaking all the personal intimate information on web that is available in the open domain and as it is in the open domain they are being accessed by them okay yes but it will open up the questions in the future that is something we have seen also okay so that is all about it and now moving to uh, we'll end the session thank you so much now guys we'll be meeting tomorrow and uh, if you haven't seen that particular video on jammu and kashmir i will insist you to please watch that thank you so much